Okay, let's talk about simple electric circuits. If we just take a loop of copper wire, and that's what I'm showing here right now, just then we're going to transfer some electrons from the bottom of the gap to the top of the gap, and we're going to see what happens. So if we do that, we'll notice that as soon as we do the transfer, these electrons move. And we'll do it again. Transfer another electron from the bottom to the top. And we'll do it one more time. So what's going on here is when we transfer the electron from the bottom of the gap to the top of the gap, when we pull the electron out, we're creating a positive charged space in the wire. And that's pulling electrons into that area. Because electrons want to get as far away from each other as they can. So if they see an area where there's no longer an electron in place, they're going to expand into that area. At the same time, when we move the electron to the top of the gap, we're inserting a negative charge there that's pushing against all the electrons on the top, and they're all moving around. So we sort of have this pushing and pulling action going on in the circuit that's causing electrons to go around. Now, a better way to build a circuit, obviously, would be to have something that continually pumps electrons around, and that's what we do. We, we use a device called a battery. And so a battery just continually pumps electrons around in circles and we can use these moving electrons to do work and to accomplish many different tasks. So here's our circuit, but this isn't very useful. And by the way, there's something missing from this because if we really were to insert a battery into a circuit like this, these electrons would be flowing a lot faster than they are right now. So we're going to show that. by bringing the resistance of the wire way down to what the resistance of wire normally is. And, whoa, what happens? We've got a fire. Why do we get a fire? And the reason we got a fire was because what we did was we created a condition called a short circuit. We were basically taking this battery, which can provide a, a pretty good bit of current, and we just basically shorted one terminal of the battery to the other terminal of the battery, which caused a really high flow of electrons, which tended to burn the battery out because the conductors can handle the currents that this battery can put out. But the battery itself has problems handling currents that are that high. Now, as we said before, the reason we build circuits to begin with is to transfer energy from the battery to some device called a load. And so let's go ahead and put a load in here. Now we've inserted a light bulb here. And we notice the light bulb lights up. And there are electrons flowing through the filament of the light bulb. And the filament is just a very, very tiny wire that's coiled up. And in this particular case, this filament has a resistance of 0.75 ohms. And the battery voltage has been set to 1.5 volts because that battery looks a lot like a double-A battery. And double-A batteries typically have a one and a half volt rating, or they do have a one and a half volt rating. So here we have some light coming off, and the reason we're getting light from this light bulb is because all, all the energy that's coming, that's being generated by the battery, is being dissipated in that filament. The filament's getting very hot because it's resisting the flow of electrons, and there's a pressure to push these electrons through and there's this resistance to flow which is transferring the energy of the current flow into the filament and causing the filament to get so hot that it actually glows. Now an important thing to keep in mind with a circuit like this is that the battery is an electron pump. It's pumping electrons from the bottom leg of the circuit to the top leg of the circuit. 
It's not creating electrons. It's taking electrons that are already there, and it's pumping them around in circles. And this is what circuits do. In fact, the term circuit comes from the word circle. Now later on, we're going to look at different types of circuits. This is an example of what we call a series circuit. The battery is in series with the load. For, for any circuit, you need really three things. You need a power source. You need a load, which is our light bulb in this case. The power source is a battery. And we need some conductors to hook these two things together. And the conductors are typically copper wires. The wire could be stranded. It could be solid. In fact, it doesn't even have to really be a wire. It could just be pieces of metal. All right, the reason we use the light bulb here for a load is because with a light bulb, you can sort of see what's going on. If we use a device called a resistor, um, you really wouldn't be able to tell what was going on in the resistor because the resistor doesn't glow or, or do anything to give you an indication of what's going on. I'm going to change the background color here to something darker just so you can see the the bulb while we do some other experiments here. Okay, so here you see a little darker background that helps you see the uh, the light bulb a little bit better. Now in this particular circuit I set the resistance of the bulb to 0.75 ohms and we already said the battery voltage was set to one and a half volts. So the question is, what's the current in this circuit? And the formula we use to calculate current is Ohm's law. And Ohm's law tells us that the current in a circuit is equal to the voltage in the circuit divided by the resistance of the circuit. Now what we need to understand about these quantities is in a circuit, voltage can sort of be considered the pressure that's moving the electrons around in the circuit. The current is the flow, the resulting flow that occurs of electrons as a result of this pressure. And the resistance is obviously the resistance to flow, which is sort of like friction in mechanical circuits. It's resisting the flow of these electrons. So if we take our battery voltage of 1.5 volts and we divide that by our resistance of 0.75 ohms, we should get two amps of current. And let's bring a device in that's going to tell us what our current is. We're going to bring this down and we're going to put it over the, the conductor and we're going to see it's two amps. Now a characteristic of a series circuit is that the current in the circuit is the same everywhere. And we can verify that with our current meter here. And the question is, or the, you know, the comment is, well, why shouldn't it be the same? Because there's only one place for this to go. You know, if you, if you think about a highway and you have a, a car per second going down the highway, is that going to change anywhere along the highway? Uh, it shouldn't if everything's flowing smoothly. So the next question is, what happens if we take the resistance of the light bulb down to 0.5 ohms? Well, if we do that, we, and I've already done it here, if we take this down to 0.5 ohms, then we have 1.5 volts from the battery divided by 0.5 ohms, then that should give us 3 amps. So let's measure it and see what we come up with. And if we measure it, we see it's the simulator comes up with 2.99 amps. Close enough. I found out that the simulator is not 100% perfect. Uh, the wires in this circuit have a little bit of resistance, but we're only off by a hundredth of an amp, which isn't bad at all. Now, what would happen if we increase, we, are, we already discovered that if we increase the resistance of the circuit, we decrease the current. The question is, what happens if we increase the battery voltage? Well, let's try it. Let's change the battery voltage to 3 volts. Okay, so I've changed the battery voltage to 3 volts. And we can see that the bulb is a lot brighter now. And the question is, how much current do we have now? 
we have 3 volts and our bulb resistance is 0.5 ohms so our current should be 3 volts divided by 0.5 ohms which should be 6 amps so let's measure it and see what we come up with okay so when we measure actually measure the current the simulator tells us that the current is actually 5.98 amps or 6 amps so Ohm's law works now as I mentioned earlier this circuit has all the characteristics of a series circuit there's only one path for electron flow but it also has characteristics of another type of circuit known as a parallel circuit in which case the load is in parallel with the power source and so since we only have two devices here this is the simplest parallel circuit but it's also the simplest series circuit that you could have it's basically a parallel circuit with one branch which is really just a series circuit. Now that's something that's very confusing to people about circuits is this idea that if I'm changing the load resistance that it makes such a big difference on the characteristics of the circuit. And the thing that you need to keep in mind is that in any kind of circuit in most cases the resistance of the resistor and in this case the light bulb is our resistor the resistance of that light bulb is thousands to millions of times greater than the resistance of the conductor and so what that means is that the electrons are changed very little by the length of the conductor or the amount of conductor material that we have they're changed far more by the resistance in the circuit. 